Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to take a look at some different ways to duplicate objects in Maya. And for this example, I will create a cone. And I'll just quickly add some uh, subdivisions to the height as well as some cap subdivisions. Okay. So the most basic way to duplicate an object is to select the object and go to Edit, Duplicate. Let me run through that again. You select the object and you go to Edit, Duplicate. Now, what I'd like you to notice is that there is actually a hotkey combination for this and it is Control-D. So you can also simply select the object and type Control-D. This can be a very convenient way. I've selected four, the four cones now to quickly duplicate multiple objects at once. Now, sometimes when I want to uh, duplicate, it's because I want to make a mirror uh, copy of something. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to select my original cone. And I will press Insert on my keyboard to move its pivot point to the point of the cone. Press Insert to exit the pivot mode. I'm going to rotate this negative 90 degrees. I'll go ahead and move it down here. And to get rid of this information here, I'm going to freeze the transforms. OK. So remember that to duplicate, you can either go to Edit Duplicate or you can just type Control D. And if I want to make a mirror of this cone, I simply need to scale it, in this case, negative 1 on the scale x. And I get my mirror copy of the original cone. Now, it's important to point out that you really do have to be aware of the scale information you have on your object. If I have some scale data on this, and then I type Control D, and I want to mirror this cone here, typing negative 1 will not work. So, in fact, if I want to get a mirror of this one, of this cone, what I should do is get rid of that scale data there. So, I have the cone selected. I will go to Modify, Freeze, Transformations. Now, when I hit Control D and I mirror it, negative 1 on the X, I get a mirror of the original cone. And don't forget that the pivot point also is very important. Wherever the pivot point is located, that is where the duplicate will mirror from. There are a couple other tools as well for duplicating. And you can find them also under Edit, Duplicate Special. I'm going to open up the Duplicate Special tool options by clicking on the box. Some of the different settings we'll take a look at will be number of copies, as well as the Translate Rotate Scale, and the geometry type, copy, and instance. 
First, let's take a look at the number of copies. I'm going to change that to 5. I will also change the translate value. Uh, let's try translating it on the x-axis. 3 units. And we'll apply. Let's try this time. Instead, uh, we will translate it oh, on the y axis, one unit. Uh, but we will also rotate it uh, 45 degrees. And as you can see, we get a different result. testing one two three let's take a look at a practical example where we can use duplicate special and to demonstrate this I'm going to create a cube I will scale it on the y-axis and on the x-axis and I will move the pivot point over here now with my object selected I will go to edit Duplicate Special, open up the tool settings, and make a few changes. We'll make 21 copies, that way we'll have a total of 22 steps. We will translate it one unit, each uh, will be translated one unit, and we will rotate each one, uh, let's rotate it 22 degrees. And one other thing I'm going to change for this example that we haven't taken a look at yet, I'm going to change this from copy to instance. And now with all these settings, uh, I'm going to apply them. And I get what looks like a spiral staircase. Now, what makes a instance different than a copy. Let's take a look. An instance is a special kind of duplicate. If I select any one of these steps and I go to component mode, let's say vertex for example, I can select the vertices and move them and it will update to all of the other instances. In fact, just about anything I do to one of them will happen to the others. For instance, I can go to my uh, I can go to my extrude tool and extrude. And they will all update. One thing to keep in mind, however, is in object mode, I can still make changes to it, and those will not update to the instances. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Let's take a look at one more practical example where we oftentimes duplicate and mirror, and that is in the case of a character. If we're modeling a character, it makes sense to model half of the character and then mirror it to create the other side. And that can be done very easily. Remember that if you type control D, that'll create a duplicate. And then if you scale it negative one on the X axis, you'll get a mirror copy. There are, however, a couple things that you need to be aware of when doing this. And we'll talk about those now. First of all, you really do need to make sure that the pivot point for your model is where you need to mirror it from. Notice that if I were to move the pivot point in, into the foot, let's say, 
and then I mirror this negative one on the x it doesn't mirror from the proper pivot point or if the pivot point is further out this way and I mirror it negative one on the x I will have a gap here between the two halves Another thing that I want to be careful of is this area of the mesh where it will join with the other half. I want to make sure that these vertices here, I have edges selected right now, but it's the vertices really that we're thinking about, need to be right along this center axis of my world space, ideally. Let's see what happens if they're not lined up. I'm going to take one of these vertices and I will move it over here a little. And I'll take another one of these vertices and move it slightly off center here. Now, if I create a duplicate, I forgot to move the pivot point. Let's move the pivot point real quick back to its appropriate position. Just so you know, I'm using snap to grid to get it exactly. This is the snap to grid tool right here. Okay. So because these uh, vertices weren't centered exactly, I end up with a gap on this part of the character, and I end up with overlapping faces on this part of the character. So how can I fix that? Well. can select the vertex, turn on snap to grid, and snap it into place. If you have a number of vertices that are not aligned and you need to fix them, what you can do is you can select all of the vertices running down what should be the center of your mesh. Turn on snap to grid. And you'll see that these vertices are also snapping. However, however, uh, they are retaining component spacing. That is why they're snapping to the grid, however, they're not aligning. Let's take a look at how we can fix that. Actually, there's two ways we can fix that. Uh, the one way I prefer is to double click on my translate tool, go to move snap settings, and uncheck retain component spacing. Now, with snap to grid turned on, these vertices will snap into place, lined up with one another, and I can move them right to that center line. I can now easily take this character and duplicate it. By scaling it negative one on the X. I'm going to undo that because I'll show you the second way that you could potentially fix this problem of these vertices not lining up down the center. So once again, I need to make sure that I have them all selected. 
And I'm going to use my scale tool and I'm going to scale them on the x-axis, not out, but in. This will force them to align with one another. And now I should still make sure that I have them lined up on that middle axis of the world. Now, one thing I should mention here is that these still exist as two separate meshes. But in fact, when you're modeling a character, you are going to probably want it to be a single mesh, or at least uh, not two halves down the middle, two separate meshes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two meshes, and I'm going to come over here to my modeling toolkit and I will combine them. Now we run into a, another problem here, and that's that while these two meshes are combined, the vertices down the middle, let me turn off snap to grid, have not been merged. In fact, if I double click on one vertex, on one half of it, you can see that even though it's a single mesh, I can still break off the other half. And to fix that, what I'm going to do is select all the vertices of my mesh. I'm going to uh, come over here to display, heads up display, and turn on poly count. This will give me some information here. What it's indicating is that we have 1,550 vertices selected and that there are 1,550 50 vertices in this mesh, as well as 1,550 vertices uh, visible in our scene. Okay, so what I'm going to do with all these vertices selected is come over here to Edit Mesh, Merge, and right here. What that's going to do is it's going to take any vertex that is right on top of another vertex that is also selected, and it is going to merge them together. This distance threshold should be kept a low number. 0 0.01 is uh, usually perfect. It just means that uh, if they are within a certain proximity of one another, they will merge. If they are within this distance of one another, they will merge. If they are further apart than this uh, distance, they will not merge. Now, if I select a vertex and I move it, you can see that they've been merged. Or if I double click, it'll select all the vertices on the entire mesh. Turning off the uh, wireframe unshaded, you'll notice that there is a hard edge going down the center of my character. To fix that, I will simply select the edge, go to Mesh Display, and soften it. My character is now a single, seamless mesh. And finally, let's take a look at how we oftentimes use Duplicate Special when working with a character. So I'm going to select my character mesh that I have here. I will go to Edit, Duplicate Special, open up its tool settings. We will scale it negative 1 on the x-axis. We will make it an instance and apply. So now I have two halves, and I can work on one half. I'm going to bridge these edges with these edges on the hand. Remember that this is actually a single mesh, this part of the uh, torso here in the hand. Bridge them, and add some divisions. 
And notice that it did it to the instance as well. Perhaps we want to add some edge loops in here. And once again, notice that whatever I do to this side also happens on the other side. It actually doesn't matter which mesh you work on. They are both instances of one another. I can select the faces on this mesh and do an extrude. And it will happen on the other mesh as well. So that's how we can use Duplicate Special uh, when modeling a character. And finally, I'll show you one more way to mirror a character. This, way, this method actually eliminates a lot of the steps I've shown you. Uh, so it may seem like the better solution. Uh, however, it sometimes created problems for me. So I will select the mesh go to Mesh, Mirror, open up the tool settings, and what I want to do is make sure that I mirror on the proper axis, in this case the x-axis, this direction here. It is on x now, and the direction, negative or positive. If it's negative, it's going to mirror in this direction. I need it to mirror in this direction, so I will change that to plus and I will apply. The benefit of this method is that it is now a single mesh and the vertices have already been merged. So that's it for duplicating and mirroring in Maya. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.